The MacBook Air has just been released with a brand new M4 processor, promising more power than its predecessor. But as a beginner programmer, do you really need the latest model? Or will the MacBook Air with the M3 chip in its base configuration be more than enough? In this video, I share my experience and show you why the M3 could still be a perfect choice for most beginner programmers and when you should consider an upgrade. Hi, I'm Raphael, a passionate developer and computer science teacher. Here you will find coding vlogs, step-by-step -step tutorials and motivation to help you start learning programming and to stay on track. Let's first talk about the MacBook Air that I'm using here. It's the absolute base configuration with the M3 chip, 8GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD. To test the actual performance of the MacBook Air with the M3 chip under real-world conditions, I conducted a series of benchmark tests, followed by some everyday tests. The benchmark tests cover different aspects of performance that could be relevant to beginner programmers, CPU load, memory performance and disk input-output operations. To monitor system resources in real time, I used HTOP. HTOP is an interactive system monitoring tool for Unix-based operating systems such as Linux or macOS, allowing you to monitor system resources in real time. It provides a user-friendly graphical interface of the key system data, helping you analyze your system's performance. It shows the current CPU usage in real time for each core as well as the total CPU load. Each core is represented by a horizontal bar indicating its load, green for user processes and red for system processes. It also shows the current stages of physical RAM and the swap partition, including used and available memory resources, helping identify whether your system has enough RAM or if it's swapping to disk. Let's start with the first benchmark test, Hyperfine. This test runs a simple Python script that loops through 10 million iterations. The command is tested with Hyperfine, a tool that measures and compares execution time of commands. The test shows how fast the MacBook Air with the M3 chip performs when executing Python code. The MacBook Air didn't show any performance issues and the test ran smoothly. The mean time of the benchmark was 193.7 milliseconds with 35.6 milliseconds statistical error on that mean value. Further test runs showed values under 180 milliseconds with around 10 milliseconds statistical error on that mean value. For the next test I used Sysbench, another benchmarking tool. In the first step I tested the CPU. This test measures the performance of the MacBook Air M3 when performing a CPU intensive task. The test result calculating prime numbers up to 20,000 using 8 threads shows that the CPU is able to process a very high number of computational operations or so-called events per second. Overall this means that the CPU performs well during the test processing many calculations quickly but there are some latency fluctuations that might occur when highly memory or CPU intensive tasks occur. The second test using Sysbench measures the memory speed of the MacBook Air with the M3 chip by reading and writing 1 MB blocks of data over a total size of 10 GB. The test command Sysbench memory with the parameters 1M and 10G is used to assess the performance of the system's RAM. The test does not transfer data from an external source but instead operates with the local memory of your system to perform a series of read and write operations. The test allocates 10 GB of RAM which is specified by the parameter 10G. It instructs the system to work with these 10 GB in memory by reading and writing memory blocks of the defined block size 1 MB. This test shows a total operation number of 10,240 with 29,000 maybe byte per second and an average latency of 0.03. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give it a thumb up and subscribe for more programming related content. 
to test the input output operations, I'm using file input output. This test evaluates disk performance through sequential and random read write operations. This first command prepares the test files, creating files of 1 GB. The second command runs the actual input output tests on the created files. It measures random read and write operations on the 1 GB test data. Here you can see an average performance of reading and writing operations with 194 megabyte per second for reading and 129 megabyte per second for writing operations. The last command removes the test files after completion. The performance of the MacBook Air with the M3 chip in its base configuration was excellent across all tested areas. The tests show that it performs well in both simple and more complex tasks like multi-threading and intensive memory operations. For most programming tasks you would do as a beginner, web development, small data processing tasks, simple algorithms, the MacBook Air with its M3 chip offers more than enough power to work smoothly without significant delays. To test the performance of the MacBook Air in typical development scenarios, I conducted a second test with various everyday tasks commonly faced by beginner programmers. I started a small Next.js project and ran the npm run dev command to develop a website locally. The MacBook Air handled the development server with typical speed, ensuring that the page loaded quickly. There were no significant delays when working with React components. Another test involved running a Docker container that hosted an open web UI and the large language model from Olama. The MacBook was able to start the container without issue and the web UI was accessible after a short loading time. While running the LLM worked, the 8GB RAM affected the response time, which were slower compared to more powerful devices with more memory or stronger CPU cores. For basic tasks and simple queries, the MacBook Air was suitable, but for more complex tasks or large calculations, it reached the limits of available RAM, which affected the performance. I also tested running DeepSeq R1 locally on the MacBook to see how it handled more complex machine learning models. The test was successful and the MacBook was able to process the model's request. However, performance was slower compared to devices with more RAM and a stronger GPU and CPU. The 8GB of RAM in the MacBook Air showed limitations with memory intensive tasks like machine learning or processing large models, slowing down speed with larger datasets. For smaller to medium models, the performance was adequate and the MacBook still delivered decent results. When testing content creation applications like Final Cut Pro and Photoshop, the MacBook showed overall good performance. For normal projects, there were no issues. Video and image editing ran smoothly without significant delays. However, when working with larger projects such as video projects over 50 to 100 gigabytes in Final Cut Pro or large Photoshop files, it became clear that the 8 gigabytes of RAM wasn't enough. Final Cut Pro struggled with very large video files, especially when using multiple tracks or effective heavy projects, leading to occasional stuttering and slow rendering times. Photoshop had issues with large files and complex edits with many layers, especially when using memory intensive filters and effects which slowed down performance and caused increased swapping to the SSD. The everyday tasks typically encountered in programming and software development were carried out smoothly on the MacBook Air. The tests with Next.js, Docker and DeepSeq showed that the device offers reliable and efficient performance. However, when handling memory intensive tasks such as running LLMs or large models or working with content creation in Final Cut Pro and Photoshop, there were performance drops. The 8GB of RAM in the MacBook limited performance when processing large amounts of data or editing complex projects. For most programming applications and web development projects, though, the MacBook Air still offers enough power and smooth user experience. So why is the MacBook Air with the M3 chip enough for most programmers? First, programming isn't a super hardware-intensive task. 
Especially when working with languages like Python, JavaScript or even Java. These languages run perfectly on the M3 chip. Even when you are working with larger projects like databases or small web apps, the MacBook Air with the M3 chip performs well without any issues. The key benefit for beginners is that you won't need to worry about performance while learning even when running multiple applications. For more complex tasks like large-scale machine learning or video editing, there are certainly more powerful machines. But for most everyday programming tasks, the M3 is more than capable. And although the MacBook Air M4 offers some improvements, they only become apparent for very resource-heavy tasks. For most beginner programmers, the M3 is more than enough. So what does the new MacBook Air M4 offer over the M3? The M4 offers a 10-core chip, offering more performance especially for tasks requiring high graphics performance or complex computations. The M4 also offers improved camera quality with a center stage feature. It also supports two external displays. However, for many programmers, the performance increase is only noticeable with very resource-heavy tasks. One big advantage of the MacBook Air is the battery life and portability. If you're often on the move or working in a coffee shop, the MacBook Air's compact size and impressive battery life mean you don't have to carry around a heavy charger. The MacBook Air ensures you can work all day without worrying about the battery running out. The MacBook Air with the M3 chip comes with 8GB of RAM in the base configuration, which is enough for most programming tasks. However, if you plan to run multiple applications simultaneously or work with larger projects in tools like Photoshop or LLMs, you might quickly run out of memory. In contrast, the base model of the MacBook Air with the M4 chip offers 16GB of RAM, which offers more headroom for memory-intensive tasks, like running large models or processing big datasets. Whether upgrading to the MacBook Air with the M4 chip is worth it depends on your specific needs. The M3 is an excellent choice for most programming beginners and for everyday tasks like web development, small apps, Python programming and content creation. The M3 delivers great performance, battery life and portability, making it an ideal entry-level machine. If you plan on working with large models, complex computations or very demanding tasks, the M4 might be worth considering. However, for the vast majority of beginner programming tasks, the M3 is still a fantastic choice. Especially with recent price drops, the M3 is more than enough for most coding needs. And the M4 is only a better option if you anticipate working on highly intensive tasks.